Hi everyone, Vape Thinny Wave Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Cannibal Ox record. Thank you, baby names. Blade of the Ronin. Cannibal Ox is a New York-based abstract experimental hip-hop duo. They made their debut in the year 2001 with the full-length LP The Cold Vein, which is celebrated as one of the best hip-hop albums of the 2000s. I would say that assessment is justified for several different reasons. One, the progressive and futuristic production on this record brought by the one and only LP, aka El Producto, a rapper and producer who has seen incredible success lately with the duo he's been working in with Southern rapper Killer Mike, Run the Jewels. But also on this LP, we have rappers Vast Air and Vordul Mega, who both had the rugged, gritty delivery of a great Great 90s rapper, but also spit lyrics that were pretty heady, which was a nice and refreshing approach considering we were just on the cusp of the bling era being in full swing. But even though this project at the time was relatively well received and it has only garnered more critical acclaim over the years, Cannibal Ox has been pretty silent as a duo since the release of this album. Of course, we have seen solo records from Vordul Mega and Vast Air. But now we're kind of hitting a point where they're due for a comeback. It's been over 10 years since their biggest record came out. They've been silent for a while. The cold vein continues to establish itself as a classic. And with this new project here, I see Vast and, and Vordul coming back to take advantage of that growing popularity, which is fine if they can come out with a record that is as good as The Cold Vein, or at least decent. As a lot of you know, comebacks can be kind of unpredictable. They can really go either way. There are amazing comebacks, but you know, the vast majority of them are kind of underwhelming. And even though I went into this record hoping for good things, right off the bat, something does kind of feel off, and I think that is the lack of LP's production. And even though I do respect Vordal and Vast as MCs, it's kind of hard because how could it not feel that way? Cannibal Ox's biggest and only record features LP's production. But even if differences did get settled and LP connected with Cannibal Ox again, I don't really think we would see the same magic. Even LP is in an entirely different place now when it comes to his music and his production. So getting back with Cannibal Ox wouldn't necessarily mean more beats in the vein of the cold vein. So considering that, I sort of see Blade of the Ronin as Cannibal Ox showing us what LP else they can do almost 15 years later. Overall, with the sound of this LP, um, it's definitely clearer than the cold vein. It's punchier. <laughs> less psychedelic, less experimental. A lot of the songs here are much more concise and I think rely a little bit more heavily on hooks. There are no five or six minute tracks in the runtime here. But yeah, this new record here is surprisingly straightforward in comparison with their previous one. We also have a bulk of the production with the exception of one black milk beat being handled by a Mr. Bill Cosmic, whose instrumentals feature some kind of eerie, mystical melodies. There's an ominous feel to some of these beats, but these melodies, the higher frequencies, are backed with some pretty traditional boom bap drum grooves. Even without looking at this album from a lyrical standpoint, just taking the beats, just taking the hooks, just taking the flows, it's it's very obvious on first listen that Cannibal Ox is, is not going for something anywhere near as experimental as The Cold Vein. Vortal and Vast do bring flow on this album. I wouldn't call both of their deliveries relaxed per se, but they do make what they do sound kind of easy, almost as if it's just effortless or second nature to them. On every Vortal megaverse here, we hear him very laid back, very subdued flow, but the rhymes are pretty thoughtful a lot of the time. I think he consistently mines some of the best lines on the record. He's kind of monotone, he's kind of lifeless, but he does bring bars. Together, him and Vast Air pull on themes from karate movies and sci-fi, outer space, and a ton of different things. Now, Vast Air on the mic, though, is a huge contrast from Vordul Mega. He's much more energetic, enthusiastic, in your face. There's a strong rasp on his voice. He's on the opposite side of the spectrum. His lines are a little bit more blunt, visceral, 
and uh, that kind of comes with its cons as well. We have one MC here that brings lyrics but neglects energy, especially on the song Blade, The Art of Ox. On this track, Vordal sounds half asleep, like he's slurring his words and just can't keep it together. Really, as the album progresses, his verses feel less like verses and just more like ramblings that happen to have rhymes in them. And then we have another MC that brings energy, but I think kind of neglects lyrics. I sort of wonder how long Bastare sort of sat on these lines before he decided to deliver them. There are numerous lines on this project that like grab my attention and not for good reasons. Uh, did I mention I like to fight imps from the fifth dimension? And there are other lines on here, lots of other lines that aren't necessarily terrible rhymes or anything like that, but uh, <laughs> either they don't really make much in the way of sense, or they're totally ridiculous, or sort of cringeworthy to the point where you're kind of wondering why he would put so much emphasis and so much energy behind delivering things like, ain't you the guy that got caught touching Pikachu? Butterfly smoking with caterpillar, some very cliche drug imagery there, kind of trying to be psychedelic with a really flat kind of drained hook on the song Thunder in July, then a uh, <laughs> uh, milkyish way by her pelvic zone. That, that was nice. Uh, when he said ham, he needed to specify that that was hard as a mother. Uh, grandmother telling him to settle his chores. Another example of him just kind of phrasing things really awkwardly in these lines, kind of making you kind of, you know, sit back for a minute, like, what, what is he trying to say there? And it kind of takes away from the impact of, of what he's trying to communicate. He even botches lines on the concept tracks on here, like Iron Rose that features MF Doom. Right off the bat, Vast Stare is just pulling for ways to incorporate the word iron into his lyrics, saying his kids are so tough they eat iron candy and that his girl is so tough she wears iron panties. Consistently, the features are, are far more interesting on this record, one verse after another from people like Elzai and MF Doom and, and You God, and even the more unknown features on, on this record are, are just more entertaining. And, and thankfully they're there because they kind of break up the monotony of, uh, of much of this record. You know, definitely Vortal and Vast do bring flows. The beats are kind of spacey. I think as an instrumental album, this record would be pretty. The rhythms thump real nice. The vibe is enjoyable on this album, but don't expect to dive into the details of this record as you may have on the cold vein and get the same amount of enjoyability. If you do dive into this record, you may actually come up empty handed. I was uh, <laughs> really anticipating this LP for a little while and it's kind of a shame just uh, uh, how little it actually ended up bringing to the table. Uh, I'm feeling a light to decent five on this thing. Pretty indifferent, it's not the worst thing in the world. A lot of the time it is pretty listenable, but there really wasn't much of anything on this project I, I could ever see myself revisiting. Transition, if you've given this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Cannibal Ox, Blade of the Ronin, forever.